is Monique Mason. I'm the course director of Fundamentals of Music Business in the audio program. And I'd like to welcome you to the monthly audio production town hall meeting, if you will, where every month we find a different guest to interview. And today we have one of my favorite people who's been here probably almost as long as, long as I have been here, uh, Derek Harvin. Course Director of Project and Portfolio 7 in the Audio Production Program. And so Derek is going to talk to us today about this more modern way of songwriting and some of the collaborations he's been working on. So Derek, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Monique. Thank you. Glad to have you here. You guys don't understand I've known Derek for a long time. We've been trying to do this yes. <laughs> for some years now. We have. Um, so I've seen you perform live. You're an amazing uh, keyboardist. Is, if I, am That's I right? right? Yes. Is that yes. right term? That's okay, right. I want to make sure I got it right. Do you play any other instruments? A little bit of drums. I'm a studio guy, so anything in the studio, you know, we tinker on and we make sounds. So, okay. But mostly primarily um, keyboard. The keyboard. Yes. Okay. So the main purpose in our conversation today is to talk about some of these amazing collaborations that you've been working on and not just the collaboration, but how these collaborations have come together. You've been collaborating via email and Zoom. What is that like? now that I guess this is the post COVID way of working on stuff. So I don't know how you were doing it mm -hmm. before. So what's it like just collaborating with, you know, other artists and, and producers and songwriters, just email and, and Zoom? It could feel cold at times, to be honest, um, because I'm used to, I come from the space of used to being in front of the artist, mm -hmm. looking through the glass and seeing the artist and making decisions right on the fly what's going to make the record better, what's going to make the song better. But now we have to use the tools that we have to be able to continue to keep things flowing. Mm -hmm. um, and we made adjustments. And, and because of that, we've been successful as a, you know, through trial and error using technology, like, like you said, Zoom and other collaborative softwares mm -hmm. to share files. We use Dropbox quite a bit. Really? <laughs> have a lot of my clients' files and folders organized on Dropbox, so it's all accessible for them at all times. Mm -hmm. So there are methods that we've grown accustomed to, but it's nothing like how it used to be face-to-face, -face, but right. this is just a, an attempt to continue to keep the business going and keep working. So you're working with Jeff Kashiwa, I'm yes. saying his name correctly, a two-time Grammy-nominated contemporary jazz artist, and you guys have been collaborating via email predominantly? Yes. So it, that feels so impersonal. And then the project starts to move forward. What's it like when you finally get to meet the person that you've been, you know, <laughs> messaging back and forth? It's interesting because every client, every person, you know, when we we're used to communicating via words and, and online and virtual spaces, even if we're able to see each other, it's nothing like that chemistry when you're mm -hmm. in front of a person able to shake their hand or just eye contact right mm -hmm. in the same room. Mm -hmm. So it's it was actually pretty great. We, I had a recent show with him down in Boca and it, and I had been collaborating with him. So you're him. performing with him too. So you not only are you collaborating on music, you're showing up and performing. Yes, and right. which was very interesting because just a little bit about it, I'm actually producing an album for a saxophonist where Jeff Koshua is one of the feature artists. Okay. And right. when we started to work, we, we said, well, we don't just want to limit him to just being a feature artist. We would like to write some songs with mm -hmm. him that give him some of the intellectually, uh, intellectual like, property, yeah. you know, estate and make him excited about right. being a part of this Letting union. Him own a piece exactly. Of yeah. So that was our mission in doing that and getting him involved. And we could certainly use his input. So Mm -hmm. I was set up and introduced to Jeff Jeff Koshua through Early Thornton, the saxophone player who I'm producing, who I'm producing this album. Okay. From that point, um, Jeff, you know, I was able to start sending some of the files and some of the ideas that I've been working up for this client. Yeah. Jeff was able to hear it and start recording in his home studio in Seattle, Washington. And he would just send files back and forth and we would mute certain tracks on our end and then say, okay, well, Jeff will play at this point and then this will be a good part to do a counter line or a counter melody. And then we'll just send it back and see what he thinks and then he'll do another take and record it. And then we'll just go along the process so we can, until we can eventually get in the studio right. together and play in separate play I, 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 ISO booths. You know, so that's how that's been. Um, Is that, does it take longer? I feel like that's a much longer process. Well, he's and if y'all could just get together. 
We're all, we're all so quite busy. He's a college professor. Oh. So he's, okay. he's in education as okay. well. So I understand the demanded yeah, schedule. Yeah. He's in and out of Zoom meetings. Um, so when he's getting to this, maybe in, you know, in Pacific time code, you know, and it's later. Oh, it's, yeah, time zone. So time zone, so it's, mm -hmm. uh, I said time code, time zone, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we're working with all of those variables as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not so detached as it may seem, you know, because this way we're in communication and I think the communication is really what's most important, like, and that's what I tell my students, even if you're falling behind on a deadline, just communicate with the artist. As long as you're staying in communication, you know, that inspiration could still flourish mm -hmm. and you could still have the right vibes. Mm -hmm. So when he sends his tracks back, if we're not slow for him, what we're doing and we're sending it back, we're still accommodating to his schedule it's fair on our end mm -hmm. um, and we're just making it happen as it as it as it goes about so it wasn't so many revisions as you may think like right, we were okay, going through yeah. like you eight or nine yeah. ten emails to make mm -hmm. this happen maybe one or two adjustments wow. but okay. you asked the question how what is because I'm performing with him when I met him for the first time it was interesting because he didn't realize I was the same person <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That I was producing. Because when I met him for the first time, I said, haven't we played together before? You recognize the name. And I said, no, 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 Jeff, we actually are writing a song together. And he was like, oh, you're the same, per you're the same producer. And he was excited that I was on this show as one of the, as one of the side men. So you, you and I were speaking earlier and you were talking about your team. Yes. And the team. So I, I want to, I want to, dive into that and then bring that back into this Jeff situation because okay. I'm not a songwriter. It seems so odd to me that you're writing a song with somebody that you never met and then you end up, you know, playing live with him and he's like, oh, this is you. I can't imagine like, you guys look each other up on social media? Like, you don't bother to go, like, what's this person look like? What's their style? You know, it's interesting. This is, this has, this is all this year. This is all has been since the late spring and the summer that I have met him and started to work with him. So this is relatively That's fairly so new. Uh, otherwise, we would have connected yeah. on social media. We're connected now yeah. <laughs> after the show. But Especially it, once that light bulb went off for him. Yes, mm -hmm. and then it was an amazing show. So you know, my plan was up to par after much practice. So I was, I I look at every situation like that as an audition. You know, I prepped myself. I knew I was meeting him for the first time. This was a separate business venture than what I'm doing with him virtually, mm -hmm. working on a song. He's a featured artist. I was coming in as a side man, as a keyboardist to play his songs. It's not so weird when you study the artist the way we write in the modern time when you study their repertoire you study their material you hear the sound you know what flair or what licks or what chord mm -hmm. progressions that they generally will play um, it's easy to get that intel to kind of customize songs mm -hmm. for at least a body of work we build catalogs of work so if i'm trying to pitch one song to an artist i'm going to try to work on 10 of them mm -hmm. to give options mm -hmm. <laughs> so you do your research i do my do research, research yes I like that. So let's talk about the team, because you've, you've mentioned the team. Where did this team, like who put the team together is my first question. And then who, who, what, what, it, how is this team made up? Like who's part of the team? Okay, so the team, it's interesting. A uh, good buddy of mine is David D1 Grant. Um, he is a fellow, uh, also an alum of, of, of Full Sail University. Oh, cool. okay. So awesome. what's interesting is that we didn't know each other back then we started to play together downtown Orlando on different gigs and and I basically became his mentor um, he has gone on to I uh, fast forward but he has gone on to become the keyboardist and the MD for John Batiste nice. uh, who just scored all of those wonderful Grammys nice. at this last so and Gary Clark jr. and I have done my own trajectory and path in the pop world and producing nice. so we've had this alignment of in our own lanes but still we will get together and write songs and, and do productions mm -hmm. so that's the core of it just how you would see Jimmy Jam Terry Lewis right. I know most people would know that that's right, pretty right. old but that was in my time you know right. um, babyface and LA Reed <laughs> now it's like the Neptune the Neptune and Pharrell and, yeah, and Chad yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that has been the core of in our system and the way we work it's just so fluid it's like we can complete each other's musical sentence mm -hmm. so we're able to study the artist get the Intel figure out what we're trying to go after and write a catalog of music for specifically for these artists mm -hmm. 
And so it started with you and David? It started with David and I, yes. Okay, and then? And then from that point, um, we have another gentleman that is kind of along the way, I was producing his project and I was introduced to him by another fellow um, record producer in town, um, Tony Hemmins, and and this is Jarian Felton, he's a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And we actually go to church together, so we've been paying, he's more of a lyricist where I'm more of in composition doing right. the music. Right. So now we had the complete music and lyrics and now we're able to put those things together. So I'm able to send him chord progressions, I'm able to send him little ideas from voice notes daily. And by the afternoon to the evening, I have a chorus or a verse, uh, a bridge, mm -hmm. and then we can communicate through text messages mm -hmm. and say, okay, well try this concept, we'll flip this word and do this, and we can work virtually so to write these songs. So you're just using text message and... And, and voice notes. And, and voice notes. Is there any software once that, that would make this collaboration easier for y'all? Well, because we're so on the go. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my kids to work, I mean taking my kids to school, mm -hmm. so I'm, <laughs> and I'm just walking, walking to school and just humming a melody on my phone. It's mm -hmm. easy to just say, here, send this, what can you make of this? Mm. Or if I get back, yes, obviously I will use Pro Tools and Logic and other software once we get those ideas. Mm. It's interesting, some of these songs have, we've used some of the voice notes in the final productions wow. because it's so organic. Right. You know, Charlie Puth has it, that album that was out before, mm. called, what was it, Voice Notes? Mm. It was all based off of that same concept. So it's nothing new that what we're doing, it's just, it's just we're all busy. We have right. lives and we have to find a way to get it done. We obviously would love to be in the same room and spend right. eight hours at the studio, but that's, you know, it's hard to happen these days. What's your favorite part about this new, this modern way of collaborating? It, I find that it's, it's impromptu. It's, you, you really don't know what it's going to become at the end of the day. It kind of fuels you to know that this is, you know, if you're in front of me and I'm producing you and I'm developing you as an artist, I can hear your vocal abilities. I can, I can coach right in mm -hmm. front of you. This is a good way for us to be accountable on our own and just really be focused about what we're contributing. Um, so I, I think it's, I find excitement in that, that it's a new process of, you know, it's how we say we always like to kind of be in, in you know, innovate ourselves mm -hmm. and just kind of grow, you know, it's, it's, I find it as a great way to kind of push the bar for my own, you know, abilities and challenge myself, you know, mm -hmm. working in less ideal, unconventional, you know, terms and setups. And that's what I tell my students all the time. You're not going to always be mm -hmm. at this glorious studio right. with this glorious mic or this preamp. Sometimes it just may be from the root of it, capturing a good melody and putting it on a voice note and send it to session musicians and flush those ideas out. Any particular app you like? That you're using in your phone by any chance? Uh, just the voice. Just, just the, the voice. voice just the voice note. If you saw my phone, I have. It's not a commercial. We promise. <laughs> hundreds of voice notes, and sometimes I have to go back through and say, "Okay, I was doing that for my album, mm -hmm. or I was doing that for Molly Music, or another artist." And and then sometimes everything's so connected that we can just quickly upload that to Dropbox, and those things are in one place. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised at some of those voice memos, how someone else would take a, a basic idea and just flush it out. I sent mm -hmm. it to one of my younger producers and who works at Disney, mm -hmm. and he's, on a, he's in a break room, in the green room, and I sent him a voice note memo. By the time he's off work, he sends me a, a whole production done. You know, and So that excites me in the process that I didn't have to be there mm -hmm. to make that happen. Same with Jeff Koshua, I don't have to be in Seattle. I, and we can still get to writing these songs effectively. I like this very trusted circle of creators, your team that you're working with. Um, so naturally, my question's coming from the, the root of my own course, which is the concern about any type of infringement or whatever. So, you know, you're saying you, you do it in voice note and then you send it to somebody else. Is there any concern about somebody taking your work or, um, you know, any type of infringement? Do you guys ever think of, y'all probably don't even think about it, do you? I mean, I've had that happen to me before. Really? I've had, you know, and I won't go into that conversation no, now. You know, that's, that's a, a new episode. That's a completely <laughs> different episode. Um, so I've had that happen, but because we're in such trusted circles, of developing these ideas when we get to a point where it's tangible, when we're able to submit it for a copyright uh, registration, mm -hmm. we can do that at that point. But we have everything timestamped. You know, we're in a digital age. Everything yes. is so timestamped. Yep. 
maybe it would be really challenging to, for someone to prove otherwise. You what know? about using Dropbox? Any concern with security of your files? Like anything? Honest. I mean, I'm not trying to knock on wood. I don't, I don't want to all of a sudden you're like, oh, my stuff is gone. But because um, I know like there's uh, other programs like, um, or not programs, but storage like box.com that mm -hmm. um, is used a lot with like sync um, with sync, sync companies. licensing yes. companies. Yeah. So I, I was just curious if you had any concerns about the security of your content in Dropbox or you you're good with that I'm I'm good with it I've used box before mm -hmm. um, I didn't know about the sync license and sync yeah, companies out there okay mm -hmm. that's good to know that might be one to consider yeah <laughs> um, but I I really haven't had a I, it's, there's so much likeness in music you know that it's it's really challenging to when you create something it's only so many notes and right. progressions that right. flow that way right. um, there's obviously deliberate infringement on copyright Absolutely. where you can hear that this Absolutely. was totally ripped off. Right. But with the way the paper trail is, the way if I was to send you a song and send you something and I was taking a meeting with you and I knew that I, this material was sent to you and you were reviewing it, two months from now your other artist comes out with a song that sounds just like what I submitted to mm -hmm. you. These things have all been times that the transactions are mm -hmm. there, you know, and if, it, if I have the copyright in place, I, it's sort of a home run, mm -hmm. you know. So it's when I was younger doing this, um, I used to be so afraid about that. I used to just like, you just got to keep your stuff. Sometimes you just got to let the material go, um, just let it go out there. There's going to be bad people in the world, or I don't want to say bad people, but there's going to be people with poor, poor intentions <laughs> to do right. those types of things. Right. That's always going to happen. Yeah. But I, no concern, as I haven't had that happen yet. Not going. Yeah, work. I'm like. <laughs> um, so. You guys collaborate in this virtual space. Now you're going from the studio to the stage. What is that transition like? It's, it's great because I have, it reminds me that now, what is your target audience? Who's gonna be listening to this material? Mm -hmm. It helps me in the studio to be able to take all of the extra things out of the song that's really not contributing to the greatness that it can be. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's too cluttered. Mm. Um, and I learned quite a bit, you know, from Darren and other people that mix my music and things. I say, is this really contributing to the song, or is that something that you like as a musician? Oh, I like it as a musician, you know, because there is a musician. Everything sounds good to me. I play jazz, <laughs> you know. I can play really complex harmonies, and and it sounds good to me because right. I that's the way my ear is. But when I think about the audience, and with my partner um, David D. Juan Grant, who plays for John Batiste, I mean, he's done some of the most gets shows from Facebook Metaverse mm -hmm. to you know mm -hmm. to um, Austin City Limits, to, so he spent a, quite a lot of time with John Batiste, um, which also helps in his collaborative space because now he has his Dropbox of material that we curated and built for materials to pitch to him. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way that was entered into that network because mm -hmm. of his relationship as the MD and keyboardist for John Batiste. Mm -hmm. So I open up that because of the loyalty of our relationship in the same way we trade business back and forth from opportunities that I have. But that's Essentially, going from the studio to the stage, you know, when you see a sea of people out there and you're able to hear what's happening with the pulse of the music, what elements are really moving the crowd, it really helps you to know how to design these songs. You get mm -hmm. in that, you can deconstruct what happens in a live setting. So interesting, because that is not my world at all, but it's so, when the way you, you, you talk about it, I can kind of picture it, and I'm like, oh, that makes complete sense. That's who's going to be consuming it in that format, especially mm -hmm. if, you know, if, if you know, if you're seeing what was programmed electronically with all of these sounds that we have. Now, we have a drummer, bass player, a guitarist, and a singer in the horn section. Okay, who's going to do all these other parts? Mm -hmm. Is the budget there for an auxiliary keyboardist? Is the budget there for an auxiliary guitarist or additional singers? Mm -hmm. So that helps you to narrow things down to can you write a great song with minimum components? Mm -hmm. And everything else is just ear candy and bells and whistles and you know modern contemporary production techniques to spice things up. Which, and, and that kind of leads me into the next thing I wanted to ask you, which is, okay, so you're working with Jeff. Yes. Kashiwa. Yes. I just like saying his last yeah, name. It's cool, right? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's so elegant. He's so cool to have a is person. Really? And that's what really, I didn't mean to cut you off, but when like, I met him, it was, I, you know, I was hired to 
performed with him through a, a, a musical director that's that based out in Tampa, and I locked in with him, and so I was able to get with all of these contemporary jazz artists. It wasn't just him, just open up a sea of all of these artists because I did one good show, as I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, you walk into these situations and look, treating it as you working as a, this is an audition, this mm -hmm. is a job interview. You know, no matter how good I am, I've been playing music since I was five. I know I can play. I know I grew up playing music in gospel Gotta church. Have that I could, you said that confidence is there, mm -hmm. but I don't let that be that confidence turn into something negative like being cocky when I'm in yes. front of a, mm -hmm. a new person that, that doesn't know me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go, here's my resume, I've done this. This mm -hmm. is a new transaction right now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's all vibe. I like that. So, how does this come together? Like, Who's, who is the actual client? So who hires you? Is a, is a publishing company hiring you? Is a record label hiring you? Is Jeff himself saying, somebody go find me? Like, how does the connection happen? Okay, so the artist who's I'm producing his album, he hired me to produce, you know, 10 songs for this third CD. Mm -hmm. um, and we spoke about who this this album, his first album was called My Life. The second was In Transit and he was um, moving overseas to Amsterdam and London and now he's back stateside. And now he wants this project to be full of like all friends that he knows in the oh, industry. Cool. So I'm now it's not my life and just him. He wants to be sort of like feature everyone else. That's so cool. Jeff is one of the artists that he has played with on cruise ships and different, you know, jazz shows where he has gone up and sat in on the final song. Now he's at producing his album. Mm -hmm. He's secured me with the budget. I, well, I gave him the budget of what it's going to cost to produce the album. So it, you're, you said... You need 10 songs, mm -hmm. here's this what it's what gonna, it's gonna cost, cost for 10 songs. This is how long I suspect that it will take. Um, this is what I need for my musician budget. This is what we need for campaigning. This is what we need for radio push. This is what we need for copyright. This is what we need for, so everything is listed out. Um, right. Registration, this is what we need for um, practically everything up right. under the sun, right. PR. So that's in place. That's Once that's agreed, I have the full reign as a music producer and as a record producer. And that's, I think that's essentially different because I'm from that school of right. not, I'm not from the beat producer mm -hmm. state. I'm from, a, I'm a record producer. I, mm -hmm. I beat artists and I build them up and see what the need is. Even right. if I'm not playing a single note on right. it, it's not about me. It's, it's about making it's it. It's the project it's manager the, It's role. the project management of mm -hmm. the entire process. So that's how Jeff was secured. Um, hey, Jeff, this is my music mm -hmm. producer, Derek Harvin. He's going to be on this thread here. Mm -hmm. We're going to send these files back and forth. I'm, yeah. I'm laying down my rough track, and he's in Miami, and he's laying down his rough track on his system. He's not a recording engineer, so it's mm -hmm. kind of it's rough. less than... It's rough. It's really <laughs> rough, to be honest with you. But but that's we're writing these ideas. Just mm -hmm. get it all out, and then now we will organize a trip where we will link up in a city to do things the right way if, we, if, it, if the song calls for it. Now, are you hiring the engineers? That's, project? Yes, that's that, your job too. That, that would be my job as well. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. So how are you managing all of this? How do you manage all these hats you have to wear for one project for a client, and then you're still teaching, and you're still dad, and you're still husband? I write a lot. I write things down. I have calendars. I have memos. I have reminders. I have spreadsheets. I have dry erase boards all around my studio. I have vision boards. Mm -hmm. I have all of my clients work, as I said, on Dropbox. I have a timeline of these projects and where things are. I'm oh, I have to be. I have to be in order to make this happen. And again, this is 10, 15 years ago, it would have been all about, well, Derek Harvin has to be the one to do this. I have to be the one to get 100% of everything. Now I realize with well, family and balance and work and friends and, and serving at church and everything else that I do in the community, there's no way practically that I can do this and, and keep my sanity. Mm -hmm. So I have to pay it forward. I have to find younger producers, younger engineers that I can inspire and mentor to bring them on and teach them the things that my mentors taught me oh, to right. be able to move the vision forward for these people because we're in the business of serving these artists so like yes. I'm I, that's what that's what we service do it's, it's a service industry mm -hmm. and when you look at it that way you take yourself out of it and you do what's best for the project and do what's best for the client so let's talk about you paying it forward and working with I love that you acknowledge that hey I'm not that you're getting old or whatever but you're like okay I've had my opportunities I want to be able to help other upcoming songwriters and, and producers get their opportunity. So what do you look for um, when you're trying to work with these, these up and coming um, 
producers and, and songwriters? What do you look for and, and how, what is that process of mentoring them? Integrity, integrity, you know, it's, that s surpasses talent to me. You know, talent is, is, we are in a talented world, so many talented people, but the integrity of being able to know that I can trust that when I send you that voice note, that your mama and everybody else in the world is not mm -hmm. listening to that. These things are very exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're working with, and, and you learn that. I had to learn that when I was working with big pop stars and, and, and when I was getting started and working on, you know, different projects. And you're sitting there, it's like, wow, this is, you know, like Beyonce's vocals right here. Like, wow, this is unreleased. I mean, it's, it could be mind blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, but you realize these are just people just creating art and there's a there's an integrity that you put into it the kind of integrity that you respect that come mm -hmm. to you back in return it's kind of what you put in mm -hmm. in, the, in the universe so i look for that with people because i know many people can get really starstruck mm -hmm. and get really really excited and just mm -hmm. see that here's a quick fast lane to success mm -hmm. but it's not it is not it's a lot of work you hear a lot of no's before the yeses i mean we're talking here about these yeses, right. but isn't, we're not talking about how many no's I heard right. to get to this point, exactly. you know? Um, so that's what I look for. I look for um, people um, that are honest, people that, that can fit within the mode of what David and I has already established. And it's really easy to, to, to catch. You can, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I tell you, I tell my students this all the time when I had the opportunity to um, um, work with 50 Cent that time when I produced a song, um, I did vocal production on a Lloyd Banks song. I was in Battery Studio in New York City with my artist, Kevin Cossum, and uh, this gentleman walks in our studio room, and I'm like, who is this guy coming in all blinged out? He must be someone. He's coming come here and walk in a session. Come to find out that was 50 Cent's um, um, business manager, mm. uh, manager. I didn't know exactly what management he was. And that night, I had ended up leaving New York City, going all the way to 50 Cent's home in Connecticut, and we sat down and had the most insightful conversation about old school R&B. I walked up in his house, he was playing my music, and we just had a chat, and it was, it was almost like we were talking, he was, we was just, we, he saw that we can engage in conversation. This is the type of person I could sit in the studio mm -hmm. for 12 hours or days at a time. Mm -hmm. I like this person. Mm -hmm. So weeks later, I was called out to LA to do the job, but that was the interview process right. that one night. Right. So you just never know right. when these, and I think the, I think the essence here, what gets to this virtual collaboration is the fact that this can continue on when you have those sort of practices mm -hmm. and when you go into each opportunity mm -hmm. thinking that way. I, I love all of this. Like this is, do we have any questions? <laughs> Before I dig down? <laughs> uh, we don't have any questions, but man, do you guys have uh, fans? So they uh, oh, wow. all showed up on YouTube to uh, check you out. Oh, cool. And, uh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> they're very excited. And um, right off the bat, the first one was two of my favorite professors. Oh. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hello Humble. to whoever <laughs> said that, right? Like, that, that's yes. super sweet. Thank that's you. That's why we're here. You that's know? exactly why we're here. And I love doing, like I said, if I could teach class like this, that would be awesome. I would do class like this regularly. So thank you. Um, so do you belong to any industry organizations? Are there any industry organizations you think that you can think of that you would recommend to the students to kind of help them with the networking process? Because that's the, even, what, even though we've been talking about it, we haven't really said it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this is about who you're networking with. Because you already said D1 was an alumni of Full Sail but you didn't meet till later. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important, connecting with other Full Sail alumni, or for a start, but then w how else or where else? I mean, networking happens anywhere and everywhere all the time. Yes. But for these particular types of um, uh, scenarios, for the songwriting collaboration, and you know, just like you said, you were in the studio, 50 Cent's uh, manager comes in, now you're at his house. like. These are, these are definitely opportunistic moments that you are obviously ready for. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk about first the networking, any recommendations, any advice you can give on that, and then being prepared. 
Yes, great. So for professional networks, as a songwriter, you know, being a part and active in your um, performance rights organization could be a good, just a great start. You know, I'm with ASCAP. I've been with ASCAP for many years. Um, there are several events that will happen for those who, if you're with CSAC or BMI, mm -hmm. get on the calendar, see what type of songwriting events that they have. Mm -hmm. Even just showing up, even if you don't speak up in these things, just to sit in a room with other mm -hmm. creative individuals to, just to see and just get inspired to realize that you're a part of this community. You're part of this community of other content creators that think like you and you may find a lot of likeness and then you might be standing around the water cooler or just grabbing lunch for the day and you may find your long-term collaborative partner just right like that. Mm -hmm. I, as long as I've been doing this, I, it never it doesn't even surprise me anymore because I know that it's not conventional. It's not going to happen when you want it to happen. It's just like you just have to, as you said, preparedness. So I would say, you know, certainly your PROs, um, Performing Rights Organization, um, because those, they would have various um, groups around town in your own communities. Not everyone is in a music city or Mecca like Atlanta or even here or in Miami Nashville. or Nashville, mm -hmm. um, um, Austin, Texas um, as well. Um, I had recently got back from there. It's like, wow, it's just, just to t touch down on that ground and see what the vibration is there. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. it's a lot here mm -hmm. um, but you'd be surprised how songwriters even in this town will have camps yeah you know I don't want to mention any names yeah. but you know but they will have various camps at various studios like plush studios or Stark Lake studios around town where there'll be a room full of producers that would just be in there now it's not like you're gonna show up your laptop say hey I'm a producer I'm, I'm right. coming to be a part of the camp right. but it's certainly you know just know that that's within scope mm -hmm. and within you know it was a process to get to that level mm -hmm. as we talked before and you have meeting. to put yourself out there I think that's a a big thing for a lot of the the up-and-coming and our students is um, you know they're used to creating music for themselves and in their house and and they're like oh I don't want anybody to hear it I'm too, you gotta let you gotta let it go you know you if you want to get to that next step you gotta put yourself out there and start getting into these different um, Circles. I, and I think today is sort of, I, I, it's oversaturated for sure with as much music that comes out mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, keep in mind, I started in an era where this was pre MySpace. This right. was when I used to <laughs> send FedEx packages to labels and to managers and artists to right. overnights just to here, right. check this out. So working. Wasn't just working, a attach a file and. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So working in the email world now, it's not so bad, you know, mm -hmm. for me. It's just like it's just kind of a slow cook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, being present online with all of the reels that you can do on TikTok and Instagram and all of these things that, you know, showcase the behind the scenes of your work. Be surprised if someone enjoys your process. Just seeing the process of how you work. Well, you might get some DMs of direct messages of like, hey, I like this. I have a small budget here. I teach the final class in audio production program, um, Project Portfolio 7, which is all about building uh, work, a professional work from its inception all the way through mastering, ready for radio. Mm -hmm. The importance of that, not only is it that it helps students discover areas within those processes that they really enjoy. Hey, I enjoy being a mix engineer. I enjoy editing vocals. I enjoy recording. I enjoy mastering. There's a discovery in that, but also it's a great way to build a body of work for mm -hmm. presentation. Mm -hmm. I personally curate my discography on Spotify, so when I go to a meeting, mm -hmm. I have over a hundred songs that were professionally released mm -hmm. from a variety of artists, mm -hmm. from Africa, from pop, R&B, gospel, mm -hmm. you name it. So it's quick and easy for someone to say, what's Derek Harvin about, what can he do? Right. So when you in the time when you don't have, what, before you network with people, be prepared, like mm -hmm. have something to show have something to show. Mm -hmm. um, some other things, um, NAM, you know, um, is, is really good uh, for the gear is fascinating. I, I believe this year, I, I heard that next year is going to be in April, I think. Really? Um, yeah, strange, winter NAM in April. Uh, a buddy of mine was telling me that. I think last year they, they did the- It was in June. It was in June. Mm -hmm. And I usually go to the w winter one in Anaheim. But that's a great way to, show show up and 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 attend various Dallas. meetings and mm -hmm. you know and, and be prepared and be prepared yep i love that so you have to speak up and you have to just you know pitch yourself you are also collaborating virtually on the molly music 
project. Yeah. How is that virtual collaboration different from the Jeff Hashiwa, or is it the same? I plan on spending more time with Jeff. Though obviously, this the project with Molly is already done. I tell my students this story all the time, and the more I say it, it's kind of like, really, did that really happen? It's mm -hmm. like, yes, it, it really did. But I met with Molly on Zoom maybe two or three occasions and spoke with him maybe 15 minutes a pop on those at that time. And I just secured him, you know, introduced myself, you know, and it's, you know, this is what, you know, what the team and I are going to be doing. This is kind of our deadline and what we see that we're going to have these deliverables uh, to send to you because he has an imprint label that was signed um, okay. through uh, RCA Sony. Okay. So he was able to control all of those things That's from nice. his own record company. Mm -hmm. So it was a great way to just like have more streamlined rather than get lost in the sauce of the, <laughs> the record company. So very limited time there. He had full trust in uh, um, and David, which was touring with him, oh, and he okay. was so he was playing music with him. So when David said, "Okay, I'm going to hook you up with my partner Derek. He's the brains in the studio, and he's the one that's going to he's the com he's the guy that's going to you know continuity. I'm a, I'm really good at continuity, like dotting the eyes and crossing the T's mm -hmm. as much as I can. I'm not perfect, but you know but your role. In that. I know my yeah. That's important because that makes David comfortable about exactly. So throwing it, the ball. So you. the limited amount of time with that with with Molly there was a level of confidence that he knew that the integrity of the project was going to be okay it was going to be mixed in Connecticut or this the files will be in this city here mm -hmm. being edited over here had no problem with it because once the deliverables came in they were on point you know we did what we said we were going to do um, and he was quite pleased with it and the project was extremely successful we actually worked mm -hmm. on that um, um, in 2020, it released in 2020, and smack dead in the middle of the onset of the, the kind of the pandemic. Mm. And we were fortunate to have at least five or six top ten Billboard um, tracks. Um, we a performance with the Grammys um, mm -hmm. um, on their their Positive Vibes um, series. Mm -hmm. A lot came from that. A Dove nomination came from that. Stella nomination came from That's that. That's gotta be such a good feeling, like. Because you were, you remember like when it started, and then you're like, okay, we're done with it now. And I think a lot of people think, okay, you recorded and you're done, and then you just walk away and go do the next thing. But you're still keeping an eye on what you worked on, and then you just see, you know, kind of, kind of like the Silk Sonic. I love what they did with that, and, yes. and how they just riding that whole thing out. Um, which I could talk about that forever because oh, yeah. I just it's very love that collaboration and speaking so I'm not going to make you sweat too hard I'm asking a little tiny question okay um, you you always speak in terms of we and the team and I love that um, are you guys a business or <laughs> I, I promise you, you don't have to go too deep are you guys formed as a business or are you just like this is a bunch of 1099s going out and <laughs> Great question. One of y'all is in charge of all the documentation. <laughs> Great question. So we did establish a management, I didn't tell you this, we established a management company because we are managing artists that, that recently okay. just came off, we had, that was on The Voice and okay. did very well awesome. last season. So we have a management company that we're managing the development of their careers, okay. um, tour support, um, social media support. So we work under that umbrella under a company called Access Granite. Okay, I love uh, that. So. Mm. Like so, so we're doing that, but we, as we establish, and like I said, we have some talking to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you've been trying to get for, me for years. For structuring like, some things, talk to you. because just because you're you're good or you're at at music or being a producer doesn't particularly mean that you're really good at business. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'd be the first to say that. Like I could certainly partner mm -hmm. with other folks that could, you mm -hmm. know, augment right. what I'm doing. You right. know, you know, really take that further. Um, but yes, it's generally David and I are the key components um, that will handle the split sheets, handle the registration with DistroKid, um, handle the copyrights, handle um, you know the, the the you know approve the the, the okay. photos and all the uh, MLC stuff, <laughs> all of those, all of the metadata. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we're really big on making sure people are credited mm -hmm. properly, sending things to all music guy. Mm -hmm. You know, Good. if they don't have it, you know, mm -hmm. discog so we, mm -hmm. so those credits can populate. And it's just a journey, like the Molly music, you know, I don't want to spend too much time with that, but that was a leg within our careers with that level of success to when you get to the next meetings to say, this is what I've done. Mm -hmm. This is what I was able to accomplish mm -hmm. with little to 
practically you know, really very little resources from mm -hmm. times to time because when you work in a virtual when you work in by yourself in that in that realm at home I highly encourage you know on um, those who are watching is to keep a timer to to quantify the time that you're putting into this mm -hmm. because you, when you're at home you find yourself enjoying what you're mm -hmm. doing next thing you, hours go hours by. go by and you're not even thinking about how much did I lose mm -hmm. how much money did I make per mm -hmm. hour you know so it's it's really and also <laughs> making that a reality for your client too like when yes. you're invoicing and you want to itemize and really have a detailed invoice um, keep track of your time how much time did you spend on this particular mix or how much time did you spend so you can really show them it's not as easy it may come easy to you but it's it's not as easy as they think it is I don't think with the exception of the people directly in the music world I think a lot of people forget the level of, of time and skill and creativity that it takes for you guys to do what you do yes um, do I have time for another question ask him another question or are we almost yeah, go ahead. I don't want to run out um, you brought up the split sheet and that was something that I wanted you to just kind of mention as much as you can um, I have a lot of students who are like well, they're not really talk comfortable talking about the splits how much each person should get or you know well I should get more and then obviously you know well I charge this and I charge that what is your advice on having that conversation because that needs to be discussed up front exactly. you don't wait till the end you do that <laughs> Up front, it's beneficial to to start that before even working on the music. You know, if you're like I said, I'm fortunate that David and I we've grown and developed in this industry together. So now, when we're working on something and there's three of us that's writing a song, it's an easy thirty-three and a third. Mm -hmm. We don't nickel and dime it. I'm like, well, so you, you guys are like we're gonna we're just gonna do this because we understand what our personal lives are. We understand what our long-term goals are, what our short-term goals are, and what what this means to us to for mm -hmm. all, all of us to have a good s stake in this mm -hmm. a good um, part of the mm -hmm. pie um, but establishing those split sheets you know it's it's not going to be comfortable to talk about you know but you have to think of it as a business it is intellectual property mm -hmm. this is something that you will hope that your children will benefit from mm -hmm. once you're gone you know um, mm -hmm. for the life of the copyright and, and thereafter you know mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, Twenty-five years after, or is it um, after? Well, the, life plus, it, seventy, life plus seven, right? seventy. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, we we've established that early on. So when it comes down down to doing the split sheets, is we know we're working on these things, and we're mm -hmm. we're really happy that we're here's another one to add to the catalog. We're just mm -hmm. going to do the splits. Now, where it can get complicated is that let's say we bring in Jeff or bring in another, another mm -hmm. songwriter, now these splits have to be changed because now we're factoring another person right. and what that person may want from it and mm -hmm. how much you're willing to negotiate mm -hmm. and bend. Moving that slide back and forth. Yeah, so it's always going to be that level, but communication. I think if you communicate um, clearly and put those things out, if you're working with serious people, they will respect it. Um, if someone is doesn't particularly understand let, let me not say serious because you could be serious but just not you don't we don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. so sometimes we like to hold on to no oh, I know I need my 70 percent it's like well you understand that we have to have a featured artist they're going to take what mm -hmm. they're going to take you know negotiate so to talk about these things early on you know mm -hmm. we're fortunate that since we've established and we have several songs that we've released together with mm -hmm. several artists mm -hmm. that we've already crossed that bridge a long time ago and y'all and y'all are comfortable with each other We're comfortable and, with and each that other. communication is huge I think that's something that everybody can benefit from understanding is you have to communicate you know I always say you know you closed mouths don't get fed exactly right I mean I didn't invent that saying yeah. I have no idea where it came from but my whole life yeah. you know if you want something you better speak up you yeah. know otherwise you get what you get that's and it. you can't be mad about it uh, I don't know where we are on time no idea where we're at. any question wrap up I can't see what he's doing I think we're getting wrapped up we get yes, wrapped sir. up okay cool no questions it, no questions all right so is there anything that you want to say in closing that maybe we didn't touch on but you feel like you want to share just in the the whole space of modern songwriting and collaborating um, with people that you may or may not know um, you know be confident you know be confident and in, in yourself be confident in abilities be confident in the, in the training that you've had here at Full Sail University um, and and just 
treat people like you will want to be treated and <laughs> and you know hopefully that that good energy will good come back it will energy. come will come back to you but certainly be business smart and savvy and protect yourself with the necessary split sheets and contracts and things of that nature that right. yes okay. oh, that's it <laughs> Derek, thank you so much. I'm glad we finally got to do this, but I'm still going to drag you into my classroom one of All these right. days, and <laughs> we'll do it again. So thank you again, everyone, for attending the audio production town hall. Again, this is a monthly affair, so please join us again next month, last Monday of the month. Have a good afternoon. One last thing before we go. I just want to give a shout out to the ABT crew. Yes, I forgot to do that. I usually do that. Awesome team, team of students, in case you guys didn't know. So thank you guys. You guys were great, very thank professional, you. and just super sweet. So awesome job to our students that are running everything here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>